Here's another, where do I start if I wanted to get into medical coding? I just need to pass a medical coding certification exam, which if you go through AAPC, you get two tries at the certification final exam, and you also do not require any prerequisites or any college classes, even a high school diploma, to take this exam. So start there. There are lots of other options with the HEMA and NHA. The only issue is with a HEMA, you only get one try per cost of t taking the exam. So for $399, you get one shot and you take the exam and you're done. With AAPC, you can buy two attempts for a little bit extra money, but then at least you get two tries at taking the exam. NHA will not allow you to take their certification exam unless you go through their course. So also, if you do a Google search, guys, on jobs right now, like on Indeed or Glassdoor, if you look up any of these certifications, CPC, which is part of AAPC, does come up with more job opportunities than any of the other ones at all, even CCS or CCA or NHAs. So that's another option that I've also looked at. So just take my word for it, maybe, if you can. Uh, think about that, that AAPC, they've done better advertising, more employers know about them, um, and you don't need any prerequisites, and you don't need any um, classes at all. You just need to pass this one exam, and I do teach from the exam point of view, so be sure and hit that follow button. I teach for free also, which is totally unique from any other teachers, for two hours, three times a week, that's six hours each week, live on YouTube and on TikTok. The replays of those streams are located on YouTube for free, so you can watch them. First thing you're going to need if you do go the AAPC CPC route is a 2023 CPT book. Do a Google search, change your search from CPT 2023 to shopping, find a bookstore, sending it to you for free shipping at the lowest price. Check daily for a couple of weeks. You'll find some really good deals pop up. Uh, book Run is one of my favorite stores. They honor whatever they have listed and they will ship it to you in good time. Part two of this, once you get your CPT book, this is the first step and the cheapest and most efficient way to get through all this and get it done the quickest way. So once you get your book, you're going to open it up. You're going to see this book is full of numbers and then descriptions next to those numbers. What I like to highlight with my yellow highlighter is if a CPT code descriptor has anything in a parentheses, I highlight that. More often than not, those words are used in the exam question than any other word listed. So some codes do not have them, some codes do. Anytime I see a parentheses, I highlight it. Doesn't matter if it doesn't have one, that's my first step, is to go through and highlight that. Next step, I go through and find all the red codes. When they change from black to red, that means they are missequenced and resequenced out of order. And we need to go find those and put a page number down beside them. I also put a column number because every one of these pages has a column number, column one, column two, but you don't even need to do that. Just at least put a page number because what the book tells you is they give you a range of codes to go find and go look for where they put this code. They don't simply just tell you a page number. It will slow you down. You only have two minutes per question for this medical coding certification exam, so you want to be able to get to codes fast. You do not need to tab your book is number two. Number three item that I also do not recommend, you don't need to tab. During this exam, all you're doing is looking for numbers. Those are the item that is on the exam that you're going to rush to and see, and then you need to go run to each one of those codes and find them. And there's no need to know where any of these tabby things 
are listed during the exam. You don't need to know where neuro is. You don't need to know where psych is. You don't need to know where ophthalmic, you know, any of this stuff is at because every exam question is going to be numerical. So, except for the wordy ones, but those are usually due to anatomy questions or your compliance guideline questions, which have nothing to do with any of these codes. So, Go find your page numbers. Get those down. Don't tab your book. Don't buy a bunch of extra stuff from other people saying you need to make other tabs. Just leave them alone. You don't need it. Get you some quick drying ink in different colors. I like to color up my books so that they stand out. Also, um, you don't need things that won't write with just the lightest touch. You don't want to have to push down on things. There was a paper shortage, and they're making these books with super, super thin paper, and you can see what's written underneath them. So you really want to get something that is super quick drying, that you won't smudge, and something that writes evenly with just the lightest baby touch. The next thing that I mark is anytime a, question, a, a CPT code descriptor says it's atrial, I mark it in red. Anytime it says it's ventricular, or veins, I mark it in blue. I keep the same color coding that is done in the Appendix L in the back of the book for this, and this is super helpful. Go through the entire book, look for those. Most of this will be located in your cardiovascular system or in the uh, medicine section in the back, but every once in a while you'll see it in other places. This is super helpful because that's half your battle for picking out the correct code in your cardiovascular section is knowing whether you are atrial or artery or aorta or vein, venous, ventricular. Super helpful. For all these free step-by-step -step tips, don't forget to go to my website, Medical Coding by Jen. Under members, if you do sign up and join, it is free to join. There is a CPT book prep page which does have pictures of everything that I'm showing you guys. You can click on the picture. It'll give you instructions on what I'm doing, why I'm doing it. There's also anatomy help and ICD-10 help there. There's also some guideline sheets that I've made for you guys, like the descriptions of the relationship between these codes, between parent and child code, which I'll mention two later. And of course, stuff from AAPC that says absolutely you can write in your books. So. Don't worry about all that, but please join the website. Also, if you go under the social media tab right there, it has a list of when I go live, all my time zones for you. And um, join our free study group, Discord, right there. Super helpful study group. I have tons and tons of free practice rooms, what to expect on exam day rooms, just tons of help even afterwards it's all free job resources CEU you can see who all we've helped each section of the book is all divided up into individual little rooms that you can go in and see what I've done and also get copies of practice exam questions if you want to practice any just be sure to keep these completely for your own personal use. These are nothing that we share over the internet. If you are struggling with any practice exam questions, if you happen to be taking a course, you can go into these rooms, post your question, and get immediate help from anybody that's on. Super helpful. Um, lots of advice here, but again, this is all personal use for our own shared group. I hope this is helpful. Back to the book, let's go through some more things that I like to copy. So one more thing I work on is closed and open procedures. I use orange for my closed and green for my open. Also, if it's percutaneous through the skin, I do one straight line under the word percutaneous. If it's diagnostic, it gets three dashes underneath it. That usually means that there's no diagnosis code or diagnosis with this one. We're just going in there and look seeing and so that we can find a diagnosis. So this is super helpful. Circle all your open and closed in color coordinating fashions because 
A lot of these CPT code descriptors are on the same bone, on the same procedure, or on the same thing, but the only difference is whether it's an open procedure or closed. Anytime a CPT code descriptor says the word each, we know that we can multiply that one. A lot of times it's very hard. Do we know that we can add a 51 or a 50 modifier to some of these codes to say that we did one or two or unilateral, bilateral, or we did 15 of them versus only one? It's kind of hard to know whether you're going to be able to do that or not. One hint we have is if the CPT code descriptor does have the word each in it, and sometimes it's not the very first word, it could be the last word in the descriptor, which can be very confusing, but you need to circle those and put a times underneath your code. That way you know this one you do not add modifiers to. You leave it alone. This one we get to do times two, times three, times four. This one we would add a modifier to if we needed to, but not technically for this one because it does have an add-on code. But you see what I'm talking about is if your descriptor does not have the word each in it, then we would add a modifier to it if we needed to change this descriptor to do multiple. That is super helpful to make note of. This is what something kind of looks like when you get it all done. We have arteries marked, we have veins marked, we have open procedures, we have closed procedures. Um, I do different colors for different bones. Totally up to you. You don't have to do all this. But those particular things are the most helpful. Promise it will help you get through these questions in the least amount of time and help you out. I outline the parent and child codes together just a little bit and put a, a, what they're dealing with. These are all veins, these are all arteries, still keeping in with my red and blue theme. Super helpful to outline them like that and bundle them together just a little bit. That one worksheet on my website that tells you what a parent and child code is, is super helpful. There's also an explanation of that in the front of your CPT book located here when they're telling you about the format of the book. See what I'm telling you about quick drying? You really want some quick drying. If I had used the lay pen for this one, it probably would not have done that. I used this one, which is a roller ball, and it's just, it will, it will do that. So be, be very careful and choosy about your pens. Another area is in the female reproductive. A lot of times you don't know if your approach is this word or this one. So I do those in color coordinates, one's pink, one's black. That way I can divide up my procedures and know right away just by looking at my question, what was my approach? Did I go in this way or that way? That way I can eliminate two answers usually right away. Super helpful. Here's another look. Super helpful to know and see that right away on the page that I know I can exclude anything here and I'm just going abdominal. Super helpful. I double star and underline in red my all my do nots in the parentheticals. If a parenthetical says I can be using a modifier, then I blue star and underline those. There's another example. If it tells me I need to use a code with another code, then I green star those. Green for go. We're good to go there. Last thing I do is you see these two, the 41 and the 43. They have the same startup wording. Every single word is the same except for one tiny little item which is a uterus less than 250 or one bigger than 250. When CPT codes are the exact same, I go on and pre put my one word differences right underneath the numbers so that I know without having to analyze this during the middle of an exam to figure out what my one word difference is, I've already got it written and I can grab that. I can grab less than or greater than. You can use any writing you want. You can even write out the 250 less than, draw an arrow down, 
or you can write out the exact words. Whatever makes you feel comfortable is perfect. Just please be sure and go through the entire book. Look for codes that start out the exact same description with only one little difference. Those are the ones they like to pick for the exam. And if you have to go in and analyze these, it can take you a long time because they start off and don't end with a same word difference in the same location. It could be in the middle of the descriptor. For example, these two I codes are the worst. Oh my gosh, they go, one word is all the same and they go forever. And trying to figure out what the one word difference in these is super crazy. So be sure and figure out what the one word difference is before you take your exam. Also, when a code is without something, I put one line through it, just like that, because there's no reason for it to be there. A lot of times the without is over here at this end, but what it is without is near the CPT code number. So you think that it might have with that, but it actually doesn't. And a lot of times the difference in the question and picking out your answer is that you needed the one that was with, and it would be this one. So super helpful to go through those. And anytime it says without, mark those. Don't make mistakes like I do. Like this one, it says with, and I put a line through it. So now I gotta figure out how to fix that. <laughs> so be careful. Try not to do it at three in the morning like I do. Here's another example without. is way over here, and then the with is other things I like to do is go through when they have guidelines right before you um, start to code some codes. Um, it's handy to at least look at the last paragraph or the last sentences because usually that holds the most important information or the information that AAPC um, concentrates on during the exam. It's kind of interesting. Um, this one for particular says that all of these codes, and that's like 45 codes right there, plus all these extra ones, include um, any radiological and supervision and interpretation. A lot of times that's very difficult. So if we go to 33206 code, we'll look at our CPT code descriptor, and it doesn't say that it includes interpretation or any radiology at all. And unless you knew what it said over there, you wouldn't know. And we can go five or six pages and all these codes go on forever and none of them say that they include radiology. This was one of the last ones that it said, that it included radiology in our interpretation. So on the exam, AAPC knows that you know or don't know that this might include radiology. They're going to put this answer with a 7000 code, thinking that you've got to go back there and add the radiology to it. But if you had moved all that info to the code, then you would know. So I go to each one of the codes that they had listed here, and I will go add any kind of little annotation that means something to me, includes rad and interp, whatever you want to write makes no difference, but write something near every single one of them. That way you've got it written and it's in a color that will beam at you because it's not every single CPT code. Some of them do skip. So like for here, we might skip one or two numbers like the 64 to the 70. It's not going to do every code in between there. So it's important to get those kind of things moved, the guidelines moved over there. That way when you're in your exam, you've got every one of the codes noted with the information that you need. For the anatomy, I like to just Google. I like to Google functions, implanted pacemaker function, and then whatever it says, if I didn't know it or it had any interesting information about what any of these things do, I would add it to it. What's the function of the right atrium? If you don't know it, write that in right there. Super helpful. What's the function of the right ventricle? What does it do? What's the function of the superior vena cava? 
go find those functions on Google and write them in. You shouldn't need but maybe at the most three words to write underneath here. Super helpful to do that. That way during the exam, if you're asked one of your five anatomy questions, you'll know it right away. I did that live on YouTube for the female reproductive system. Um, step by step, we looked up each function of each particular body part and wrote it out. Um, it's on YouTube. If you are a membership subscriber, then you get access to all my book prep videos, which is super helpful. All those links are on my website under social media tabs. You just click on them and it'll take you right there to them. Super helpful. And you can watch those replay videos. After you get that CPT book prepped and done, you need to go to AAPC website, become a member, and also you need to purchase six exams for practice for the CPC exam. You need to go here, and when you go here, your six exams will show up. You need exam A, B, C, D, E, and F. Super helpful. No one's going to track what you do here as far as what your scores are, so don't be saving these. Just go on and go into them. There's 50 questions per exam, and if you have time to answer one little old question, go in there and answer that question, and then go hit grade. It doesn't matter. You can get these unlimited graded as often as possible. My point is you need to practice all these questions multiple times. You need to find out what the correct answer is and you also need to go in and figure out why the wrong answers are wrong. Why would the 12004 be wrong from the 34? What's the difference between those two codes? What header differences are different? You can also look at your rationale and you can also make a little notation in your CPT book about what if I had an eight centimeter laceration to whatever body part this is, how would I code it? And you can put that near those codes, which is super helpful to have reference during your medical coding exam. But what's more important is picking out words that are in here that are not in the CPT code descriptor that might mean the same thing as what is in the CPT code descriptor. What did they mention that might say that this is a layered closure? What's the difference? What wording is in here that is different from the CPT code descriptors that could help? You can add that wording there. Super Super cool. These exam questions are very like what you're going to see during the exam and the subtle differences of knowing that there's a header change here between simple closures and intermediate closures is your difference between these two answers is the main important header. Important thing that you should be learning from here. These headers right here change we're doing removal of an eye or removal of a foreign body. That's different. Those are the differences before you do your CPT codes and your CPT descriptors. If your answers are children codes, you can't do nothing with that. You have to go to your parent child first to see what the differences are in case you get two answers that are both children don't compare those two children, compare the two parent codes. Again, that definition of what these codes are is on my website and also in the front of your book. This will get you started. I know we got to do our ICD-10 and our HIPPICS book later, but this scenario is super helpful. It's another um, indication and helpful tips to get you started and it's the cheapest fastest way to get you there all you needed so far was your CPT book and those practice questions
in your membership, unfortunately. When you buy those practice questions, you can do it without the membership, but it's going to cost you more. You could save some money, but then the membership does cost, but totally up to you, but you do need those practice questions, and I highly recommend you getting them from AAPC. Um, there's a lot of people selling a lot of books out there, um, not helpful, unformatted, incorrectly, wrong answers. Don't bother with it. Please just go to AAPC and get their questions. They're the ones that are going to be testing you. It's the most legit and, and um, best examples for you, for sure. Please do not share them openly over the Internet. They are AAPC's copyrighted questions. We can discuss them and use them as study tools and infer to them, but we are not going to be openly sharing those, so please be careful about that. Get And any time you're tired of doing practice questions is a great time to just start Googling eye anatomy and then do eye anatomy function and then go find out what each one of these little parts does and write that in. I like my color days, that's what I call those when I'm doing these, when I'm tired of doing all of this where I'm getting rid of my withouts or my highlighting or my one word differences. If you don't know what the difference is between the EV, the EN, and the EX, you need to get those differences written down. Super helpful during the exam. I hope this is helpful and uh, helps clear up some information that is kind of scattered about. And um, be sure and follow Subscribe to the YouTube membership or the TikTok memberships. Those are super helpful and you get entered into prizes to win AAPC swag, copies of my notes, or free one-on-one -on -one tutoring from me too. So another bonus for joining the YouTube and the TikTok. So I will see y'all on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 6.30 Arizona time zone for free practice help on these questions.